Hello, my name is Tony Chan from Telecom TV. I'm here at the OpenStack Summit 2017 in Sydney, Australia. With me today is Azar Sahid from Red Hat. Azar, thanks for coming. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for the invite. It's a pleasure talking to you again. As the chief architect for Telco at Red Hat, uh, what, what do you see as the most prominent use cases being deployed by Telcos using OpenStack? You know, NFV has taken on pretty well in telcos, and OpenStack has become the basis for deployment of NFV. Um, what we've seen in, uh, increasing these days is OpenStack as the infra manager to go deploy NFV workloads. And if you look, take a look at the NFV workloads today, most of them are virtual machine based, and so it's kind of a natural choice where you have extensible platform that manages compute, storage, network, and, and then you can onboard VNFs and deploy, uh, de deploy that. Um, within NFV itself, there are certain use cases that are much more dominant than others. Um, there's a lot of people looking at deploying vo voice over LTE, for example, IMS, um, or virtual EPC on the mobile side. And on the wireline side, deploying VNF as a service, and also perhaps uh, things like virtual CPE. At this event, uh, some of the hottest topics seems to be uh, Kubernetes and containers. Uh, how do they fit into this NFV model and how does that relate back to OpenStack? That's a great question, Tony. Um, Kubernetes is emerging as, uh, Kubernetes has been an a application management capability. Kubernetes uh, is part of Red Hat product called OpenShift. Um, and it's part of what we provide as platform as a service, as a PaaS. OpenStack, on the other hand, provides infrastructure as a service. So for applications to run, you need infrastructure that's initialized and ready to go. So Kubernetes will consume a node that's been initialized and ready, but Kubernetes by itself cannot initialize the node. So in other words, connecting the network, building the plumbing, attaching the storage, and managing the compute capability. So the way we look at it is Kubernetes is good at orchestrating containers, orchestrating applications, and it can be run very easily in tandem with OpenStack, where OpenStack manages the infrastructure. I think the conversation going forward is more going to be um, how will uh, Kubernetes adapt to the needs of infra management? And will there be some new projects in future? We don't know, but the good part is both you know, Kubernetes community and OpenStack community are talking, and I think there has been some indications of this at this OpenStack Summit as well um, in terms of that conversation. How difficult is it to actually containerize an NFV, for example, or a, a VNF? And uh, what, are you, what, what is Red Hat seeing in, in this area? Now, we are seeing the backend infrastructure migrate to containers faster than the VNF workloads. And the reason being, all the network equipment providers, they are working to move their software that was previously running on physical appliances and physical network functions into a virtual environment. So they've tried and built now virtual machines. Now what you have to do is refactor that particular application to build to a true microservices model and then containerize them so that they can evolve independently. And that's going to take time because it's about rewriting that network application to work in this new environment and to be containerized. Now, you can take a virtual machine and you can you know, recompile it and build it as a container and say, go use it. But that's not going to be useful for you because the usage model will still be that of a virtual machine usage model, which means you still need the same capabilities from the infrastructure layer. So that's the challenge, I think. I think it's going to take us at least you know, three, four more years to get VNFs to move to seriously move in that direction. Um, in the meantime, we think there's a good opportunity to see whatever is containerized run with OpenShift or Kubernetes on top of OpenStack, which is an initialized. And then you can use that same infrastructure to manage both virtual machines and Kubernetes. Right. Uh, given uh, Red Hat's background uh, and expertise, I guess, in uh, Linux and OpenStack, um, how are you evolving your technology to adopt to containers? So today, um, 
Red Hat participates both in Kubernetes community and in OpenStack community. We are number two contributor behind Google in Kubernetes community, and we are number one contributor as a company in OpenStack. So the good part is we are in both kitchens. And as both communities evolve to adapt to this environment of new workloads, new capabilities, OpenStack control plane fully containerized, we are in much better shape to look at what's happening in the other space and bring the best practices to fruit. Um, so from our perspective, um, our next release of OpenStack will have OpenStack control services that are containerized. So we are moving in the same direction. Um, while we are also working in the Kubernetes community to enhance functionality in Kubernetes um, so that we can bring some of the network capabilities that people have known and begun to like in an OpenStack environment. So Kubernetes, you know, bring better CNIs, bring better capabilities into Kubernetes to make that happen. So we're working in both spaces and you can see that at some point these two uh, directions will merge, and we are aligning ourselves in such a way that we'd be in a good position when they merge. Coming from the telco uh, space, what are you doing to help them actually cope with this transition from well, open source, open stack, and then now to containers? and Several things. Um, today, I think our conversations with telcos has been a lot around OpenStack and about, you know, um, if you look at the dominant telco deployment use cases, is around NFV with OpenStack. And we are now also having the same conversations with telco again in the context of how their applications are migrating, how their applications are being refactored into a microservices model. So, while the container, container conversation was more limited to the back end of telco, meaning the operate IT systems, the OSS, BSS systems, that conversation is now more mainstream on the services side of telco, on the network side of telco. So what we are doing is bringing the expertise that we've developed in the context of um, uh, telco operational workloads with OpenStack and and enhancing the functionality in the context of Kubernetes and OpenShift to provide those things. Two, providing better integration of, of, of OpenShift and OpenStack. Three, you know, working in the community upstream with our partners, with our telcos, with our NEPs, um, and providing them ability to do things like container development kit, uh, which we offer, that allows them to experiment, play around, work, understand the DevOps models, understand the CI CD models, and then migrate their workloads over a period of time uh, into this environment. Okay, uh, I guess the last area I, I have to ask is 5G, obviously. That's a big opportunity, and uh, it seems to, um, it's, it's just the, it seems the industry consensus is that OpenStack and open source solutions in general will play a pretty critical part in the service architecture. Uh, what are you doing in this space? Um, again, we have started to, I mean, as we had spoken back in Beijing, Tony, on the OPNFV and the VCO, the, we're kicking off actually the next phase of VCO on VCO Mobile to exactly trial first for 5G RAN. Um, we believe 5G, what is 5G characterized by? Higher throughputs, better reach, but also characterized by edge computing, low latency. Now, when you want to place edge computing and, and provide low latency for the users so that you can really make the use cases like AR, VR, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality uh, happen. You need the ability to now not just place those compute nodes, but manage and orchestrate those compute nodes. Initialize them, manage them, orchestrate them, run the workloads. So we believe that what you will see going forward is higher distribution of compute capability across the infrastructure, moving from core to the edge and from edge to probably the customer edge. And in terms of how would OpenStack evolve to manage that, how would containers fit in to manage that, those are the areas of our focus, our interest, in terms of enabling a platform that can deliver 5G capabilities. Because 5G, sincerely believe IoT and edge compute would be the two top requirements and use cases, and from a latency-wise also. So 
how, to, how do we enable that? How do we now deploy thousands of smaller set of nodes and build an orchestration model, build an infra management model for all of those? And that's what we think is the next big challenge. I think that's what will happen. If you look at some of the NEPs today, they are saying we will deliver 5G capabilities via containers. And so I think there is a sense of urgency and there is a sense of purpose. Do you think you're going to meet the schedule? I mean, 5G services are set to be rolled out, I think, 2019, the latest? I, I think the way I look at it is what you will see in 2019, 2020 is still some level of broader trials. What I sincerely believe in is that we will, you need a platform that can evolve with a set of changes. It would be foolish for us to actually pick a platform today and say that platform is going to live for the next 10 years. The change that happens in open source and in this industry is very, very rapid. What you need is a platform that can address what is available today and evolve to the direction in which it's going. So from that point of view, we feel incredibly confident that we can do that. Um, in terms of what you will see in 2019, what you will see in 2020, I believe most of those conversations will be around RAM for 5G, building that splits model with CUDU, and allowing infrastructure management capability in that particular model. I think NG Core for 5G is still some ways away in terms of you know, acceptable standards, acceptable implementations and fully containerized cloud-native conversations. And that, my, in my personal opinion, will be beyond 2020. Great, thank you very much. Thank you very much, it was great talking to you.